Well, I'm back again, Gemini. It's September 2022. You're going to need a lot of energy this month. I'll tell you, let's start the ball rolling here. And you can see the fiery planets, Mars and Sun, energetic planets in the angles. Uh, very important month for you. You're going to need that because you'll see uh, that around the... Let me get my... Oh, there's my eyes. I need my eyes to, to read for you. So, uh, September 10, it's all building up to that full moon here in your 10th house of career. That is why I say you need loads of energy to help you in that respect. Now, the moon for you, which is going to be full in this area, is your finance planet. That's a good omen because it brings good opportunity for you to improve your finances at work. I'm making notes here. Um, but it's also important to note here that on the 5th, prior to that full moon, the planet of expense and speculation, Venus, moves into its weak position there in the fourth house, the domestic area. It's underneath the earth. This is the horizon. If you look at this line across here, then everything here is under the earth. So these fiery planets may not be visible to other people. You may be nursing that ambitious drive in a way that's not altogether obvious to other people. Now, there's a little bit of a Caveat on that, you've got this Venus moving through its weak sign and then in close proximity here to the Sun. Fortunately, the Sun is moving away, but that burns up the energy of Venus. That's the term called combustion and being in Virgo, debilitation. So Venus is very, very much weakened. So you might have all this fire, but at that time, after the 5th, 6th, 7th, you feel that your creative energy is at a low, you could have some sort of creative blocks. There's Mercury going retrograde around the 11th. And I'm going to make a note of that too, because that's very, very important. Why? Because Mercury is your ruling planet. That shows you maybe having some second thoughts about the, you know, the decisive aspects of your, your creativity, the way you do your job. It's also got to do with romantic involvements. So there's a change of heart there in terms of your creativity and love and also to do with children communication may be a little skewed to say the least now i'm just going to try to keep up with this the 17th we see the sun in opposition to neptune there so that can show some confusion some inability to act due to a lack of information this is also a career combination and coupled with your ruling planet being retrograde and then again there on the 17th that powerful moon mars reactive combustible combination all to do with your work finances they're all affected at that particular time it's maybe not the best time to schedule any sort of meeting with your employers or people that you know matter your accountant that sort of thing because Sure as anything, when you've got that volatility with the Moon-Mars combination um, and the retrogression of Mercury, there's going to be some sort of misunderstanding. Uh, you'll think you're being understood, but in fact you're not. The 23rd, Mercury moves back into its retrogression here into the fourth house. It's like you've forgotten some stuff here that you were working on with your family. So there's a, a dominant sort of factor there with a lot of energy down here in the lower part of the horoscope. And that's going to be accentuated on the 26th. As you see, this moon swinging around, getting darker and darker into the fourth house again. So this new moon is going to take place here. That's going to have that influence as well of, <clears throat> well, it's a fairly wide influence. Uh, but Neptune is still in the opposite sign where this new moon will take place after collecting the energy of Venus and retrograde Mercury in your fourth house, it's going to bring that energy to the new moon conjunction with the sun in the fifth house. Fifth house is your children. That whole creative push that I've been talking about, it may well be that that new moon gives you some cause for hope because the new moon is always about unleashing new energy, a new cycle beginning, and maybe seeing your way forward. Maybe not totally, because you're going to have to wait for this retrograde Mercury to make its way forward, to get, you know, to get it back into that fifth house. 
and that's uh, we're going to leave that till next month because as you can see it's going to continue its retrogression till the end of the month Venus moves to Libra on the 29th that's helpful that's helpful but there's that combustion you see there's, there's Venus getting really close to the Sun and creating some sorts of weakness there. There may be some issues surrounding your children at that time. This is also the, the one of the higher thinking mind parts of the horoscope, third house, fifth house, ninth house. These fifth and ninth house are the spiritual components of the mind. So this combustion here shows that possibly the the key to you regaining your confidence creatively is to connect with that spiritual higher self within you. It's all good news, and there's more. If you go over to astrology.com.au, Gemini, I've got the chronological transit list there that's going to fill in some of the gaps that I haven't uh, given to you just here. Please subscribe. It helps us. It makes us look great. If you subscribe, leave me a note. Have a whinge if you want, and I'll uh, try to get back to you. And if you need a private reading, I'm always available for that as well. I look forward to your company again next month. Take care. Bye-bye.